Today, we meet the new president of the Missouri Historical Society. That's coming up next on City Corner. I'm Steve Potter and welcome to City Corner. Well, today the Missouri Historical Society is in new hands. We'd like to welcome our guest today. That's Dr. Jody Sow, recently named its new president and CEO. Jody, congratulations. Thank you very much. It's good to see you again. Nice to see you. I know you've uh, been on the show a few times. I couldn't tell you how many times or when. <laughs> I'm not sure either. So yeah, it's always uh, interesting for me to hear people describe me as new because of course, I've been with the Missouri Historical Society for a long time, 16 years. I've been in St. Louis for 19 years, so mm -hmm. uh, not new to the area, not new to the institution, but a new job. Well, we're, we're excited for you. Um, I want you to say a little bit about why you had the opportunity to get this new position, and that, that's because someone retired, and I just would like you to yeah. sort of acknowledge them. Absolutely, so Francis Levine was our president from 2014 until just this year, and so, yes, after a long career uh, working both in New Mexico and here in St. Louis, uh, she has decided to retire, but she tells us she's gonna stay in St. Louis because she, like me, has fallen in love with this community. Mm -hmm. Do you get a bigger office now? Or? <laughs> uh, it is slightly bigger. It's just across the hall. I didn't travel far. But. <laughs> you know, people may recognize you because you pop up on commercial television for a minute or two because you've been doing this Missouri uh, History Minute. For yeah. how long have you been doing that? SDL History Minutes, I think we've started about a year ago, so not, not too long. But yes, I uh, enter people's living rooms every Sunday morning. Well, uh, why don't we take a look at one right now? Oh, great. I'm Jody Sowell from the Missouri Historical Society, and this is your STL History Minute. If we gave grades to schools, St. Louis's Sumner High School would surely deserve an A. When the school was created in 1875, it became the first African-American high school west of the Mississippi. In 1910, the school moved into a building designed by William Itner, America's premier school architect. That building in the Ville neighborhood remains the school's home today and is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. The school's alumni list reads like a who's who of American cultural and civic life, including Tina Turner, Chuck Berry, Arthur Ashe, Dick Gregory, and Margaret Bush Wilson. Few high schools in the country can match Sumner's class of graduates. Currently, St. Louis school officials are debating the future of Sumner as they try to address declining enrollment. No matter its future, its past is something all of St. Louis should honor and be proud of. Jody, I always enjoy those. I didn't realize those were just on Sunday mornings. Yes, and then they also go on YouTube and social media. But you know what I love, that's a perfect example, being able to tell the story of Sumner High School, the first African-American high school west of the Mississippi, from right here in St. Louis, telling those St. Louis stories uh, is, is what I love about this job, what I love about every job I've had at the Missouri Historical Society. How, many, how long have you been doing those, and I wonder how many you've done altogether? Oh, so again, I think we've done about a year's worth, and you know, I don't know, uh, 30 or so. We have some recordings coming up in just the next couple of weeks, so I need to get to my script writing, but <laughs> yes. Uh, but I love the variety, so we try to tell a wide variety of stories about St. Louis history. Um, we really hope you watch those on Sunday mornings and say, I, I never knew that. That's I, what we're hoping. I can testify to that because Excellent. I'm up early Sunday mornings and I guess that's when I see you and I always find them really fascinating and, and really well done. I appreciate it. You mentioned that you've been with the, uh, uh, with the organization for something like 16 years. I think your most, and you've had several different positions over yeah. that time. Your most recent one was director of public... So yes, managing director of public history. I right. oversaw the uh, publications, education, programming, communications, exhibits, public history, evaluation teams. So our division was a big part of the institution, I think one fourth of the institution or so. So um, yeah, so that was my most recent job before becoming president, which I just became about a month ago. Yeah, well here's something people probably don't realize that um, the Missouri Historical Society is more than the Missouri History Museum. 
That's so right. Just to kind of explain the couple of different organizations that are involved. Sure. So we have three locations. We do have the Missouri History Museum in Forest Park. We have our library and research center on Skinker, which is where people can learn that personal history. So history of their families, history of their homes, history of their neighborhoods. Uh, it's an amazing resource that not enough people know about. And then just in 2018, we took over operations of Soldiers Memorial downtown, this um, memorial that was built in 1938, but that um, uh, we just took over operations recently and really made it, I think, a, a new, new museum. How did that come about? What was the reason that that happened? So I think they wanted to um, improve the facility, improve the exhibits, really bring new life to Soldiers Memorial, trying to get more people downtown as well. There's a great museum corridor with the Blues Museum and the Cardinals Hall of Fame. And the garden This and being part of that, exactly, so City Garden. Um, and so it really was a desire to make this treasure of this community something that people would come to again. Uh, we totally renovated the main floor. We also opened a brand new exhibit space downstairs so that we could have rotating exhibits really for the first time in its history. Um, don't take this the wrong way. I don't mean that you have an easy job. Ah. Uh, I don't. But you know, here's your job to promote the history of St. Louis. And aren't you lucky that there's so much to promote? I am so lucky. I tell people that I wasn't born in St. Louis, but I got here as fast as I could because I think it is the most fascinating city in the country. Any story you want to tell about American history, you can tell through St. Louis. Um, we certainly didn't expect to stay in St. Louis. I came to St. Louis to get my doctorate at St. Louis University, uh, planning on going back into a teaching career, but just fell in love with this community and all the stories it has to tell. Well, you're stuck with us now. Uh, I'm here forever now. <laughs> uh, going back a little bit of history, though, about you, um, you have Tennessee and Arkansas roots in you, don't well, you? Well, that's true. I was born in uh, Memphis and grew up in small town Arkansas and graduated high school in Memphis. So kind of back and forth between Memphis and Arkansas for a bit. I bet people ask you where you go to high school all the time because that's a St. Louis thing. <laughs> it is, but I tell people, uh, people don't really care that you didn't go to high school here. <laughs> oh, yes, they do. <laughs> they do, but I'll, I'll talk to you about that later. <laughs> hey, we've got a couple of pictures from your past we want to share. Um, and let's put one up now and you, oh, you could sure. kind of Tell us what we're looking at. Well, this is what brought me to Missouri. So I um, was a journalist. I got a journalism degree from Southern Methodist University in Dallas and worked at the Dallas Morning News. I came to Missouri to get a master's at the University of Missouri School of Journalism, world's oldest and finest school of journalism, uh, and then began teaching there. So this is me working in the newsroom. I was a teacher. I was a editor in the newsroom. You probably know MU puts out Columbia's Morning newspaper. Mm -hmm. Students work as reporters and photographers. Faculty work as editors. Uh, that's my eldest daughter. She became kind of a mascot of the newsroom as well. But yeah, really proud of that work. We were there for did 9-11 coverage and some really important coverage. And this is your family this, a while back. This is. What brought me to St. Louis was getting a doctorate in American Studies from St. Louis University. So um, yeah, that's Savannah and Vienna and my wife, Shannon. Um, but yeah, that's where we came to get that degree, but absolutely fell in love with St. Louis. And congratulations to your youngest, by the way, is just about to start college. Just about to start college at Iowa State University. Wow. Nice. Um, let's talk about the popularity of the Missouri History Museum um, over the years. What have you seen in your past 16 years as far as, as far as attendance and public interest and that sort of thing? It's so different. So what brought me to the Missouri History Museum was an exhibit called Flight City. Uh, and it was an exhibit about the history of aviation in St. Louis. And you can tell I'm a proud dad. Even my daughters were <laughs> testing out the interactives. But um, you know, at that time, we were we were getting crowds, but they were smaller, smaller crowds. Um, I love that exhibit, by the way. St. Louis has such a rich aviation history um, from McDonnell Douglas to Curtis Wright to all of these fascinating well, stories. Well, St. Louis International Airport it, was a little it, it, strip, little yeah, airstrip, right? Yeah, exactly. So, um, so that was great. You know, I took that job because I hoped maybe it would lead to something. Maybe it would lead to us being able to stay in St. Louis. I was still working on my doctorate, but I thought maybe if I could take this job, 
I would end up staying in St. Louis and staying at the Missouri History Museum. Mm -hmm. Did you have another plan before then? <laughs> well, the plan before then was to go back into teaching and probably go on the national market uh, to teach at a university, um, something I was doing at the University of Missouri and very much enjoyed, um, but then decided that we wanted to stay in well, St. Louis. Well, talk a little bit of just about the increase in visitors you've seen yeah. and attendance and all that sort of thing. Yeah, so, you know, I took a variety of jobs at the Missouri History Museum, public historian, and sort of did some contract work. In 2013, I became director of exhibits, and we saw an immediate jump in attendance, largely thanks to, you might remember, in 2014, St. Louis was celebrating its 250th anniversary. Right. We did an exhibit called 250 and 250, where we told all of St. Louis history through the stories of 50 people, 50 places, 50 moments, 50 images, and 50 objects. Mm. What was great about that is as soon as you told people that list, they said, well, did you include this? Did you include <laughs> this? It was an immediate conversation starter. But what I think it told people is, we're gonna tell history a little different. We're gonna focus on St. Louis, and we're gonna tell these stories in new and fun ways that you might not expect. Sounds like a lot of work. You must have a bigger staff than I think. <laughs> well, I don't know how many people you think, but uh, <laughs> over the Missouri Historical Society, we have about 200 people. Those are, of course, curators and archivists and researchers and public historians, but there are also people who work in accounting and HR and guest services. And so it takes a true team to build the level of product that we're building. Yeah, and how do you know you're doing a good job? I think you showed a picture a second ago <laughs> of lines of people that we had to actually put into stanchions because we were close to breaking fire codes inside of the gallery because so many people wanted to see this history. So we had to let people in in 10 minute waves. Wow. I told them, I know you hate standing in line, but for me, uh, there aren't many things better than seeing that many people wanting to engage with St. Louis history. Well, we're going to make the people watching this program uh, stand in line for a little uh -huh. while because we need to take a break. Oh, okay. But when we come back, Jody, I, we have some uh, uh, current show coloring uh, St. Louis. is something new, but we're going to review a couple of the sure. past things you've done. Love too, to so. tell you what's coming up. Jody Sal, he's in charge of the Missouri Historical Society, and we'll be back with more City Corner after this. Just one. From the arts, architecture, and culture. Community Center. And you're never too far from great music and entertainment. So come and experience St. Louis. If you smoked, this new lung cancer screening could save your life. Visit SaveByTheScan.org. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes, and you can do it here. So what are you waiting for? Just go to the site. Operation Wonder Park is a go! There's nothing more powerful than imagination. But don't just imagine. Use STEM to change the world. Who's with me? It's gonna hurt tomorrow. If she can STEM, so can you. Find out more at She Can STEM. The Missouri Botanical Garden is loved by green thumbs and non-gardening types alike because you can play. You can relax. And there's always something new to experience, no matter the time of day or the season. And learn about conservation in one-of-a-kind plants. So come and experience St. Louis.
I'm Steve Potter, and welcome back to City Corner. Dr. Jody Sal is our guest today. He recently has been named the new president and CEO of the Missouri Historical Society, which is the Missouri History Museum and the Library and Research Center <laughs> right. and Soldiers Memorial. Uh huh. And you've been here something like 16 years. That's true. So as far as we're concerned, you are a St. Louisan now. Uh, I think I definitely qualify. <laughs> um, just real briefly, we kind of touched on, uh, I think we mentioned the pand pandemic briefly. Mm -hmm. I remember talking with you or somebody right when it all was starting. Yeah, I think we Is that Will that be three years now in a few months? I, so. I, I get so, a little yeah. mixed up. And I remember how bad it was, not only for you guys, of course, but for every institution. Sure. And I'm sure you had, I'm almost thinking you didn't shut down completely. We, we shut down for a little bit at the very beginning, and then we were able to open our doors, um, and then we did have to shut down when rates got high again. Yeah. Um, so, you know, what every museum has experienced, that sort of, are we going to be able to open, are we not? We stay, we were open earlier than most museums. We stayed open longer. What I think I'm incredibly proud of is how we were able to share St. Louis history even when we were shut down. So one thing we did was we started a series called Uplifting STL, and that was every day we posted a social media story that could be read like in one sitting really quick about an inspirational or motivational story from St. Louis's past. Mm -hmm. The idea was you're hearing a lot of bad headlines, take a break, learn a little bit about St. Louis, but also be inspired by the way that we've risen to these challenges before. I think it worked. Let's start, you have a new ex exhibition that I wanna talk about, Coloring STL. Yeah, I talked to you about like, we try to tell St. Louis history, but tell it in a different way. So this is an architecture exhibit like none you've ever seen. So uh, every history museum could do an architecture exhibit. Not all history museums, or not all places have a rich history of architecture like St. Louis. But Keller and STL is gonna do something different because in this exhibit, not only are you gonna see great artifacts and great photos, you are literally going to get to color on the walls of the museum. So we have uh, put outlines of St. Louis buildings, including 100 over the park, or buildings where people live, um, residential buildings, also buildings that have been lost to time, buildings that are still here, lost to time, Poro College, or still here, of course, Cathedral Basilica. Um, and you can go up with dry erase markers and color those buildings, the Fagan building. The things we're looking at right now, yeah. I would just walk up to. You, you would walk up to the wall, there are markers there, you can color them, they're, they're tall, they're big. Um, so it's a great thing to do with a group or with your family. Um, it, we're really hoping it's gonna be a conversation starter. It's one of those things where, yes, you're coloring these buildings, but you're also talking to one another. And then on rails in front of them, you'll learn the rich history of all of those buildings. The Fagan building, which was across from the old post office, uh, people were so scared of it. It just looked so strange. It had these huge boulders almost and glass in between, and people didn't even want to be near it because they thought it might topple over this thing, this sort of monstrosity they thought. Yeah. Today, it kind of looks like a modern day, modernist <laughs> building. But anyway, um, these rails will tell you all these stories and share these photos of the building. So if you love architecture, you're gonna get that deep architecture history. If you just wanna play and have fun with your friends and family, you can come in and color. It really showcases St. Louis as the great architecture city that it is. Do I have to um, stay between the lines? You don't have to stay between the lines. It does include great artifacts. That's the door from the Merchants Exchange, which was like the stock market for the riverfront, uh -huh. uh, built in 1875. It was the largest open building um, in the country at the time. So you're gonna hear, you're gonna see great artifacts. You're gonna see a film of St. Louis buildings. You're gonna have St. Louis architecture trivia. You're gonna have touchable bricks. Um, this is the hydraulic press uh, brick company uh, where people could go and choose what style of brick they wanted, like choosing what style of paint. I didn't even know paint, that. I right? didn't know that was a yeah, thing. Yeah. Exactly. So you're gonna learn so much architecture and his history here, but you're also gonna have a lot of fun, which is what we try to do. We're trying to make history accessible. If your memories of history are college or high school classrooms where you had to learn a bunch of dates and take a quiz at the end, we want to disabuse you of that. That's okay. not that's not what history is about. Here's what's a little weird about me. That's that was the way it was when I was in school. It was one of my favorite subjects. Yeah, yeah. And some people do love it. And that's what I think is great about 
our museums is we can create experiences that you will enjoy if you love history or if you think you hate history. Right. Um, I like convincing those people who think they hate history that they actually don't, that uh, the past is much more fascinating than they ever knew. And how long will the Coloring St. Louis exhibition be up? So it opens on August 20th of this year, so just a few days from now. We're working hard on it right now. Uh, and it will be open all of next year and closes in 24. All right, I know we want to talk about some other things that stick in your mind. Um, Vietnam, I remember that one. How long ago has that one been? Sure, so, so this is a new take on Vietnam. So we're opening up an exhibit called Vietnam at War and at Home. Uh, at Soldiers Memorial. I told you that we opened that new space uh, at the basement of Soldiers Memorial. Yes. It allows us to bring in new exhibits. This is one that people have been asking for ever since we took over operations. I would think, you know, particularly people of a certain age that actually remember that. I was a, I was a kid in grade school uh, watching Walter Cronkite on TV. So anything about Vietnam to me, just, it, it's very meaningful. It is, and this really, it does what Soldiers Memorial does best which is it tells that history through a St. Louis lens. So again, you might not think you're interested in war history, but you will be interested in learning how St. Louisans contributed. I think you, I don't know if you can see on the screen, but on their helmets, it says St. Louis. I think one, it says St. Louis Cardinals. We'll have a St. Louis flag that was taken to uh, the battlegrounds. Um, and don't you have a story? There's one soldier in particular yeah, so you will hear stories of religion and how religion was experienced. I think you have a picture of Michael Blassie. Uh, Michael Blassie was, yes, there he is. Um, very honored to work with the Blassie family to get some artifacts from him. His story was he was shot down in Vietnam in 1972. And uh, his remains were put into the tomb of the unknown soldier, partially because of some identification problems. The family worked tirelessly for years to get those remains identified. I believe it was in 1998 when mm -hmm. he was reinterred at Jefferson Barracks, giving him the honor that he so deserves. Um, and you know, I mentioned that the family was helping us with the artifacts. Um, that's another thing that I love about all of these exhibits is these are not just built by those 200 people at the Missouri Historical Society. These are really built by the community. They are the ones who help us, who loan artifacts, who tell us these stories. Do you find the, I'm just guessing sometimes people know a lot of history and they don't realize they have something to contribute? Absolutely. Uh, you know, when I was oral historian, um, I mentioned the Flight City exhibit. Probably the thing I heard most was, oh, no one cares about my story. Uh -huh. And that couldn't be farther from the truth. Uh, local history, personal history, that's what can bring history alive. Let's talk about uh, another exciting thing you do, and I'm not sure when this started. It's been a while. Maybe it was after the pandemic. The Thursday nights. Yeah, Thursday nights at the museum. So every Thursday night, we're open a little bit later from 5.30 to 6.30. You can come in for sort of cocktail hour, enjoy some pop-up activities. And then at 6.30, we always have a main stage performance. It might be a concert. Uh, I recently had, we recently had a Casey night and a concert about... Uh, from St. Louis's first all-girl punk rock band, The <laughs> Welders. Um, I think you have a slide upcoming. We just saw a slide of a sort of tribute to St. Louis black women and black leaders. But we also then, a few weeks later, have Wrestling at the Chase, where we will actually not just tell you the stories of Wrestling at the Chase, but we will have a wrestling ring on the auditorium um, stage, and there will be live wrestling at the Missouri History Museum. Well, if I get to color on the wall, do I get to wrestle? You get to color on the wall. You do not get to wrestle. Um, <laughs> there is an age limit. No, Steve. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, that hurt. But, you know, that's what I love about these Thursday nights, is that some Thursday nights we're blowing the roof off the place with a band, and some Thursday nights we'll have wrestling, and some Thursday nights we'll have very serious discussions. It's that kind of variety that I think brings people to a history. So is the Thursday night thing more geared toward adults then? Yes, uh, I think so. Um, certainly there are kids who come. I certainly saw kids at uh, the Casey night. Uh, they learned some language that I don't know that they knew when they started. But um, uh, we certainly have kids. But yeah, it's more of an adult's evening. Well, we've just got a couple of minutes left, Jody. And here's a big question. We probably need a whole other show. But... Uh, 
you must have some sort of future plans, even if they're just kind of vague. You've done such a great job, not just you, but I mean everyone there, mm -hmm. the institution has. How can you make it any better? What kind of long-term yeah. plans do you yeah. have? That's so exciting. I mean, that's a challenge. I once had a friend say, aren't you worried about running out of stories about St. <laughs> Louis? And that will just never happen because this place so is so interesting. You know, one of the things that we say we're going to do in the coming years is introduce you to a St. Louis you've never met, even if you've lived here all your life, because we're looking for those stories that you don't know. So in the coming years, we're going to tell you new and surprising stories of the 1904 World's Fair, a story you probably think you know everything about, but I assure you, you don't. <laughs> um, we are going to take you on a decade by decade walk through St. Louis history, taking you through every decade and telling you both the big stories, but then also how life was lived in St. Louis. And we're going to show more of our collection than we ever had before. That's exciting to me, and I'm sure to a lot of other people. Uh, my mother's family has been in St. Louis since about the 1850s. Mm -hmm. So I grew up hearing a lot of stories. Of course, I didn't write anything down. Right. Um, but I bet there are a lot of people like me that uh, it, it'll kind of touch a nerve. Yeah, I think, you know, what we hope to do is to share that history in a way that's engaging and accessible and works for you if you have a long history in St. Louis, but also works for you if you just moved here or are just passing through. Well, what's the best way for somebody to find out about uh, museum hours and what's being offered and any other kind of activities that you've got? Sure, probably the best way is mohistory.org. That's our website. You should also look for us on social media. Um, and then, you know what? Uh, you'll see me walking the halls all the time. So you should come up and say hello and ask me what's going on. I always love talking about the Missouri Historical Society. Well, I can tell by the way you said that, that that's important to you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've talked a lot today about family. Um, I, when we're at our best, we're like a great big St. Louis family reunion, telling all of these stories and really helping people connect to their past and connect to one another. Mm -hmm. Do you have a particular, like, in your inner self, do you have like, oh, Jody, this is one thing I want to accomplish while I'm here. Do you have something <laughs> like that? Uh, You know, I think just as much about the future of St. Louis as I do about the past. And so uh, what I really at my heart, I want to connect people to the past so they'll be more invested in the future. Dr. Jody Sal is the new president and CEO of the Missouri Historical Society. Uh, check out the Missouri History Museum and all the other things he's talked about. I just want to congratulate you and I know you're going to make something great even greater. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jody. It's great to see you. Great to see you. We wish you the best. I'm Steve Potter. Uh, well, now you've got something to do. Check it out. Thanks for watching City Corner, and we'll see you next time. Bye.